Good morning. We'd like to present the retail holders on a daily chart. We would like to present to our MMTs when is a good time to short the safe haven retail holders who have done well over the last couple of years since the 2008 crisis. Over here I'm going to simply point out some of the formats that we do use and some of them are going to be the following area. When we were overbought here we were at 92.25 percent on 1218. We had a correction that's ended on 316 with the consolidation and only at 24.71 percent. Standard technical analysis MMT. That's what the broader market and hedge fund managers and the bigger community look at. They have no other tools. We got down. We made that move on here. We consolidated. We broke and we made all time bull highs right here and we're right back to 92.07 percent overbought. The thing of it is, is, is that corrections happen on daily charts. They signal what's going to happen over here on this retail holders weekly chart. Here we're at 87.40% overbought. We had the, four, the, the same correction that I showed on the daily, which was right here as part of this four week uh, short that we had did. We had to come out because then we made all-time bull highs. Bull rallies do have bull corrections. And we have another longer-term bull rally that will have a correction. Seasonality will come into play with retail holders index. Summer is generally the slowdown period. We have been out in the malls. We have been looking at the retail model. We've been looking at the discount model that all retailers are discounting 50, 80 percent off. So there are some good deals out there for consumers to buy. And they generally do this going into a slower period. High oil has come down. Commodities are coming down. Those corrections are in play. So that when we do have the correction in the retail holders, we want to have a primary focus of why we would want to go long so that once we have the corrections like this, that new MMTs can understand why the retail holders would break another bull rally high. Now, providing that gas come down and commodity comes down, that means that we will have a correction and it will be more bullish on the correction from overbought. Remember, overbought is overbought on what we call public standard technical analysis, which is 92.25%. Down here at the bottom peak during the consolidation, we hit as low as 20.12%. Well, that's a big difference. And that's how that bottom price, because we went from overbought to short-term oversold to new rally highs. How to short overbought indexes. The other thing that we're going to talk about is the 200-day simple moving average. And there is a formula that the big money uses. Now, remember one thing. The people watching the video, we're market makers. And on a daily compounded and a five-day compounded level, we have a different format than the public format. The public format is understanding where they're making their decisions and why. Then the SMF platform gives us the trade. It's not just by looking at the chart and going through all of what we're going through. The SMF platform will not be wrong and it will tell us when we peak. One of the things that I'm going to have Brian Plain do is give a complete analysis in part of this video as why we are using this distance here. So what is behind this? That's this green line to the current high here on the daily. And I will put the video on pause for a moment. I will have Brian Plain come in on the video and then explain it. What I will say before I release Brian Plain on the video is, is that everything that's in the daily chart down here, that the public model about corrections. So we know that the best time everything has a, a, an overbought short term bull rally has to correct and then bull rally has to go to the highs again and make higher highs. Now, the, the thing about the exercise with our MMTs and the reason why we're doing this is so that they can learn that whether it's retail holders or any index of what the daily 200 day simple moving average is to the current price level. Brian Plain, you're welcome to take over right now, sir.
Sure. One of the things I wanted to show you guys today was uh, this column U over here, where it's the. Uh, Can you point to U? I don't know where U is. I'm pointing. Got the pointer on it. Okay. So we have right here. This number is represented where the current price is relative to the 200-day moving average. 200 days over here in column H. And the 200-day right now in the retail holders is $102.36. We're currently trading exactly 11% above that number. And if we go back in history and look at the most overbought this was relative to its 200, we saw we got as high as 20.5% above the 200. And that's the most in the history of 2,500 trading days that we've ever seen it. And so we can go back and take a look at these three periods where it traded over 20% above its 200. And this hasn't occurred since 2003. This was 9, 2 through 9, 4 of 2003. Eight years and, ago. Yeah, eight years ago almost. We were very overbought on the retail index. We were, you know, $16 above the 200 period. And so if we go back and take a look at that period and really see well, what would happen if I had shorted that overbought area, would I have done well or would I have lost money? You know, that's that's the important thing, you know, making sure that your indicators work and that you're looking and making sure that you're not going to lose money. And so if we go back to that period, take a look. And there's a lot of data in here. <laughs> Let's just filter right to the point. I'm working on it. So we were up here at 91.19, 91.30, 91.20. We went down. And it took to the end of September. But they got it down to 84.03 from 91.30 which is a relatively significant drop in such a short period of time. It was a $7.27 movement to the downside. And that took your 20.5% over the 200 down to 10.4. And that's where you had the buyers step back in and you had a bull move higher. You came right back up. You had another you had an even bigger move because you made higher highs, 84.03. So you made a $9.31 move from here to here. So there was two moves that you could have got. You could have got the short to the upside, and then when they took it down, that 10%, it was almost exactly 10% above its 200. It was 10.1%. When they took it down that far, that's when the bull came in, the volume came in, you had positive money flow, and you weren't as overbought as you were, and you came right back, and you got right back up, and then it was another great short again for $4. And so judging based on how it trades relative to its 200, you can tell if you're getting, if you're paying up too much, or if you're, you know, if you're reversing and going lower. So one of the things that I'll go over as well is the best times to buy this and where those numbers were. Which was, okay. Here are the best four days based on oversold conditions relative to its 200 day moving average. Back then, your 200 moving averages were extremely high at 91.21 and back in 11 of 08 there were 89.63 and so you were about $25 below those in some cases in, you were even lower than that 89.63 so you were very very far off from these moving averages about 28 to 30 percent and these were the most oversold conditions so if we go and we unfilter the data and go back to those time frames 
probably 2008, huh? Yep. You can see you got a huge bounce in just a few days. You got up from down here at 60, 63, and you rallied all the way up to 77.80. That is one nice movement. That call options would have paid a lot of money during that bull phase. That's a 28.31% move in just a short time frame and on an ETF. You know, you don't normally get these types of movements on ETFs in general, but that huge oversold condition created that opportunity where you could get in and get a $17 move in only a few trading days. So basically, this is the RTH holders index, and what I'm hearing from you that there are ETF bulls and ETF bears that go with the RTH index. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, and there's we'll different... To... Okay, and we'll get involved in that ETFs in a, in a separate video than this one. Keep going on. Well, I was just going to say that, you know, there's there's other leveraged instruments that can pay more than, say, this one um, when when things drop. Because this thing, the way this thing is weighted is it's, it's weighted based on market capitalization of certain retail holders. Yes. So your top, your top three are Walmart. Home Depot, but then you got Amazon, which is 12.69% of this. Okay. And so, you know, if Amazon is, you know, being taken up on short covering and, you know, a lot of people just day trading and just pushing it higher, then you're dealing with a lot of lo less lower beta stocks. That's the main high beta stock in this index right. that I, that's right so what you're saying brian plain is to understand what the weighting is of the retail holders index with the broader instruments that trade in the retail holder index that's what i'm hearing as far as rth is concerned is that true then is understanding what the weighting is and then you're telling me there's going to be leveraged instruments that would move much quicker and give a higher yield on the short trade from an overbought using various other instruments that would remove us from the retail holders and the Amazon weighting as to that particular dollar amount trade that we would get when we wanted to sell short, right? That's exactly right. Can I put you on pause for one second? Sure. Here we have the retail, Morgan Stanley Retail, which has just a pure weighting in its own cell that here are all the company names. And this is basically when we're looking at trading something short is we can see that there was some distribution on Friday. And these are the names that are being bought and being sold. Okay, Brian Plain, if you can conclude why it's so important to understand when overbought is overbought, and it doesn't matter that it's retail holders, it could be any sector that's overbought that we all are always getting entries on overbought sectors and stocks within the sectors and individual stocks that are overbought. The same standard rule will always apply in the SMF training model, will it not? Absolutely. And one other thing I just wanted to point out about where we're currently trading on this uh, retail holders is that we're putting in fresh 52 week highs on this, but you're not really getting a lot of follow through volume. In fact, volume's been drying up. You haven't even traded a million shares. And that is not the kind of behavior you're looking for when an ETF or a sector is putting in a 52 week high. You want to see above average volume and you want to see positive high end money flow. And you're just not. So I wanted to point that out to people, and that's probably part of the reason why we slid down after we put that 52-week high and we had a $2 drop, and then we've been kind of consolidating at a higher low right now. But once again, the volume is not following through, which indicates you know people don't really feel comfortable buying up here. So what you're saying is, just like it was in the silver index, that it got so overbought above its 200-day simple moving average, people get crowded in other kinds of trades and they correct. Where retail holders has been a safe haven for money managers to stay in this thing for multiple years, 
whether recession or bull economy or not. And it's always been a safe haven. So when we do get these contractions or pullbacks, it has to be fairly decent bad economic data or bad retail holders data where the consumer is in the current area to support the bigger drop in the retail holders and that seasonality is a major factor as well as to where we're at so we're going into the slow season of the summer period so when we look at making a trade that's going to fall in value and make money we have to have a very good plan and we have to have very consistency with it. Now, this is all public standard technical analysis. The SMF platform, though, shows a different story. And we used our platform on the daily level, knowing when that we have a weakness building at tops. Part of the weakness, Brian Plain says, diminishing volume on the upside to 52-week highs are ripe for corrections around the corner. And... Brian Plain, would you like to go ahead and close out the tape, please? Sure. Um, it's not that we can't go higher from here based on our mathematical ratios and some of the things that I talked to you. I showed you where we were when we traded at the highest level above the 200 period. And there's still some way that we could get there. Um, you know, it's about 9% from where we're at right now. Where if they wanted to walk it, if, you know there's light volume and you know they want to push these markets higher or they want to hide out here they they still can but you know when when you have global markets correcting like you did on Friday and you have most sectors uh, hanging out at the lows and breaking new lows throughout the day uh, these go along with it especially with uh, gas prices being as high as they are uh, the consumer picture going into the summer driving season doesn't look as bright until these energy prices come down and until that happens um, you know you'll still have these people hanging out but you know there's definitely some opportunity to the downside uh, on on this and we'll be watching it intraday well thank you very much and I'm going to conclude it yes the intraday process is using that weekly but over here once again we did start a daily correction right here in this video these were the corrections that we traded to the downside before this is the longer term rally from that correction we are at an all-time high in the retailer holder index and we're having a pullback is around the corner and we will use our system we will be on a daily high alert monitoring system as to when to make these trades using calls puts hedges and everything else that it would take to be successful in taking down an overbought index like we have done in the past right here.